Hello, everybody. Here I am in church. You might be able to see a globe just behind me. The whole world. The whole world. Today, in our Bible reading, in our Bible reading, we're not going to hear a story from one of the Gospels. Normally, we hear a story from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. We're going to hear a story from the book of Acts. In the Bible, the book of Acts comes just after John's Gospel. And lots of people think that probably Luke wrote the book of Acts. Luke told us what Jesus' disciples and what his other followers did after Easter. And after Jesus had been taken up into heaven, what we call the ascension, which we'll hear about in a few weeks' time, and after God's Holy Spirit had come upon his followers, in the book of Acts, Luke tells us how the good news about Jesus spread from Jerusalem to the whole world. The whole world, which has meant that 2,000 years later, we are lucky enough to know the good news about Jesus in our part of God's world. And we're going to hear a story today about a man called Philip. That one's going to be Philip. Now, Philip was one of, one of the Christians, one of the first Christians. He wasn't one of the disciples. There was a disciple called Philip, but this is a different Philip. This is a Philip who had heard the good news about Jesus when he was living near Jerusalem. He had heard the good news about Jesus and he met, in today's story, a man from Ethiopia. Now, this man, Luke tells us, was travelling from Jerusalem. This man from Ethiopia had been to Jerusalem and he was a very rich man and an important man. He was travelling in a chariot and this man's job was to look after all the money of the Queen of Ethiopia. So he was a very important man. And Philip was told, you'll hear this in the story, by the angel to go and talk to this man from Ethiopia. I'm going to show you where Ethiopia is. So this story is happening around here, just near Jerusalem. And Ethiopia is actually here. Some people think that when Luke says he was a man from Ethiopia, Luke might have actually just have meant that he was a man from Africa. He was a foreigner to the people in Jerusalem. He was a different nationality than Philip. But you'll hear what happened. And many people think that because of Philip's conversation with that man from Ethiopia, the good news about Jesus began to travel from Jerusalem, from Jerusalem, into Africa and into Ethiopia itself. Let's hear the story. A reading from the book of Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get ready and go south. Go to the road that leads down to Gaza from Jerusalem, the desert road. 
So Philip got ready and went. officer in the service of Kandake, the queen of the Ethiopians. He was responsible for taking care of all her money. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship and now he was on his way home. He was sitting in his chariot and reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So Philip ran towards the chariot. He heard the man reading from Isaiah, the prophet. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man from Ethiopia answered, can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. Then he invited Philip to climb in and sit with him. verse of scripture that the man was reading was this. He was like a sheep being led to be killed. He was quiet as a sheep is quiet while its wool is being cut. He said nothing. He was shamed and was treated unfairly. He died without children to continue his family, his life on earth had ended. The officer said to Philip, please tell me, who is the prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself or about somebody else? Philip began to speak. He started with this same scripture and he told the man the good news about Jesus. While they were travelling down the road, they came to some water. The officer said, look, here is some water. What is stopping me from being baptised? Philip answered, believe with all your heart you can be baptized the officer said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god then the officer commanded the chariot to stop both philip and the man from ethiopia went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit took Philip away. The officer never saw him again the officer continued on his way, full of joy, full of joy. He continued on his way. But Philip appeared 
in a city called Azotus, and he preached the good news in all the towns on the way from Azotus to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we come to our activity. I don't know about you, but I thought that was a really great story. Wasn't it wonderful how Philip and that man, it's like they became friends really quickly. Just a chance meeting and they were very different from one another. They were from different countries, but they met. And they met because Philip, was told by an angel to go down a particular road. And then, you might remember, it said the spirit said to him after he had seen the man in his chariot, the spirit said to him, go up to the chariot, talk to him. It was a meeting that Philip wasn't expecting to happen and the Ethiopian unit wasn't expecting to happen, but it was a meeting that changed everything because, if you remember, Philip, well, the, Ethi the Ethiopian saw some water and Philip baptised him. He told him the good news about Jesus. He told him the good news about Jesus and the man knew that to be a follower of Jesus, the next step was to be baptised. It was to say publicly, yes, I believe. And that changed that man's life. And it changed the life for lots of other people because, like I said, because of that meeting, people think that Christianity, that faith, the good news about Jesus traveled into Africa. So that Ethiopian told other people. And that's the great thing, isn't it, about the good news about Jesus is it spreads because somebody tells somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody. And that has been happening for 2,000 years. And thankfully, because it's been happening, somebody has told us. So we can be Christians today. We are people who know the good news about Jesus because of all that telling that has been going on for 2,000 years. So I thought for our activity, maybe have a think about who you have met in the last few days. Now, I don't know how many days you can think of at once, but I think I can probably only think of four days at once, and one of those days is going to be today. So as you see, if you get a piece of paper like that, Make four columns, and you do that by folding your piece of paper in half and then folding it in half again. And then when you open it up, you've got four columns. So the thing to do is to write today's day on the last column. So I'm recording this on Thursday. So on the last column, I am going to write Thursday. like that. And the day before Thursday was Wednesday. And before Wednesday, Tuesday. I don't know if you can remember who you met on Monday for four days. So if you were starting, you might start with the day you were writing. Imagine it's Sunday, which is the day perhaps you're watching this. You would do Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday. And on these columns, Draw the faces or write the names of anybody you can remember meeting. Now, the truth is that I cannot remember who I met on Monday. Um, but I can remember yesterday, Wednesday, I met with Claire, who, is, who helps us with all the history and all the building, doesn't she? And Claire was very helpful to me yesterday. She did a job which was really great. So I've written Claire on Wednesday and I'm going to draw Claire's face. You might want to use Claire's hair. You might want to write the name or you might want to draw it. Claire is always smiling so I'm going to put a smiling face and we'll do the rest of her face 
right. Ooh. Well, she's ended up with a red face because I thought it was pink. But there we are. So there is Claire, right? Now, after Claire, I met with my next door neighbour, whose name is Lisa. I'm just thinking about Wednesday because that's, I think, as far back as I can think. So there is Lisa. And something I associate with Lisa is that Lisa and her family have just got a little puppy whose name is Rosa. Well, they've got Rosa just before Christmas, and she's a lovely little puppy. Belle doesn't agree, but I think she is a lovely little puppy. Right, now, I'm drawing Rosa next to Lisa. There are, there's Rosa, and she's wagging her tail. She's a cockapoo, so she's got sort of uh, scruffy fur in a very nice way. Right, so, now, do you get the idea? So, and on Thursday, so far, this morning, I'm trying to think, who have I met this morning? Well, I've met my mum and dad because they're in my house at the moment. So, let me draw them. So, so you'll be doing this as well. You'll be thinking, who have I met today or yesterday? And you'll be putting them on the column. Right, there we are. So that's the start. You get the idea. So some pictures or some names. And then by the end, maybe this evening, I will think, who else did I meet today? And I will draw some pictures of them. Or I'll write their names. Maybe I'll fill the whole column. You won't be able to write everybody, but just pick one or two people. And I might have, if I have some time later today, I'll think, who else did I meet on Wednesday? I could fill in that column. Who else did I meet on Tuesday? And who else did I meet on Monday? And then, so think about meetings, because of Philip, meeting that Ethiopian eunuch. And it was a really important meeting. And sometimes, if you have a bit of a busy life, or if you're going to school and you're meeting lots and lots of different people, we can kind of forget that every meeting is a really important meeting. When we meet somebody, we've got a choice, haven't we? Either we can smile a big smile, or we can just sort of think, oh, this meeting isn't very important, and we just hurry on our way. But the Bible tells us in that story, every meeting is important. So perhaps, when I go to bed tonight, I will think about those meetings that I've had. And I will think, did I make the best use of those meetings? Did I give a big smile? Did I try and cheer people up? Did I or didn't I? And if I didn't, maybe in my prayers I could say, God, I'm sorry that I didn't. And please help me to do better tomorrow. And if I did, I can say, dear God, thank you for that meeting. That was a good meeting. And dear God, please go with that person that I met. Because it was the end of the story. Did you notice? Philip said the angel of the Lord took him away. And the Ethiopian, you know, carried on on his way. But he went full of joy because God was with him. So we could say a prayer that God goes with all the people that we meet in our days. That's the activity. Have fun. See you soon. Bye.